Right, g'day guys, welcome back to another episode of Tips and Tricks. It's been a while since we've done a little tip and trick. At the moment, we are full steam ahead packing for at least 10, maybe 18 months traveling around Australia in our new 79 series with our uh, little 14 foot hybrid on the back. So at the moment, my shed is a mess. I've got just everything sprawled out on the floor that we're gonna take. Um, and I've got to somehow get all of that into the van in the next couple of days, van and full drive. So we thought while we're going through, we'll do a couple little tips and tricks. Um, we've got a full packing video coming very shortly as well. But this one is our top 10 remote touring essentials. So I'm just gonna run through what I think are my top 10 most important uh, pieces of equipment that we will be taking. And to be honest, some of these are just an absolute must. I know when we were trying to sit down and plan everything that we're gonna be taking, it can get a little bit overwhelming and um, we've sort of had too much stuff and now we're cutting a lot of things back. You wanna be very weight conscious when packing that you're not taking everything, including the kitchen sink. So let's get straight into it. Um, if you are enjoying these videos, guys, make sure you like, subscribe, turn that bell on so you don't miss any of the updates. We absolutely love your interaction. So let us know in the comments if you think there's something that I've missed. Um, is there something that you guys would add or do you reckon we've just about nailed it? Let us know. Let's get into it, number one. Okay, so these are in no specific order. I think most of these are very important. So we're gonna run through it. Number one, this probably is the most important, water. There's a lot of things that you need when traveling the road, but if you're in a remote location and you end up stranded there, you're only good for a couple of days unless you've got uh, decent water storage. So, um, look, I'm very lucky that in the 79, I actually have 155 litres of uh, water storage and another 300 litres in the van. So, water storage I am well and truly covered for. However, when we do pull up some of these remote beaches and we're gonna run out and probably do a couple little overnighters in the tinny, I'm always gonna make sure I take at least 10 litres a day uh, per person when we sort of head out, thereabouts. You just wanna make sure you've got some backup water storage. That is the main one. That's something you cannot survive without water storage. Uh, and then a couple of backup options. Like I said, in the van, I've got three separate tanks. So if I'm to burst one tank, I'm not losing all of my water storage. So let's break it down. If you were to just take a four wheel drive and you've only got one tank, you probably need some sort of backup in case you are to break, rupture or contaminate that number one water storage. All right, number two, this is a super simple one, a basic one that absolutely everyone should have in their four wheel drive camping kit anyway. Uh, it is the first aid kit. Now look, part of four wheel driving and being out and about, it's just inevitable that someone's gonna get a cut, kick their toe, uh, get a hook in their finger, or worse, a bit of a laceration. So I just went down to my local ARB store. They've got two different size first aid kits. I guess what you'd call like a couples kit, and then they do a family kit as well, which is absolutely massive. Um, has a lot more components in it, and it includes a snake bite kit. The reason I went for this one is because I've already got a fully unused snake bite kit. So that'll be going along with this. I've got so many different first aid kits laying around all over the place, but for this trip, I just wanted a brand new kit that's full. Um, you find over the years, bits and pieces get taken and used, and um, I think it's always good to make sure you either stock up your first aid kit or get a fresh one. So I even have a separate little first aid kit in my boat um, accessories bag. I'll show you that uh, a little bit later on as well, but. Very basic, simple one, guys. Good quality first aid kit with a snake bite kit. Easy, simple, uh, grab them from wherever. People sell them all around the joint. Number three is a very simple one that uh, if you get caught out without it, you could be in a lot of strife, which I found out the hard way. So this is something that I now never leave home without. It is a good quality fire extinguisher. Um, now look, when you are out on those remote travels, you never know what might happen. Um, and having a fire extinguisher on board is uh, an absolute must. We were actually traveling through the Northern Territory. There's a full video on it if you wanna go and find it. And uh, we, had a, we had a zip tie break basically, a cable touched uh, the exhaust system and it wasn't fused correctly. Um, and we ended up with flame on inside the vehicle. And of course, where was my fire extinguisher? It was left 
on the shed floor next to my chainsaw um, and we were in a lot of strife. We just got away with that one, almost lost the car. So I've got a little small fire extinguisher that I keep in my boat bag and these ones, these guys here are called Fire Striker. Now they come with a couple of clips, you can mount them anywhere in the car, but they are super small, compact, um, and basically it's something you can just leave in the car all the time. Sometimes fire extinguishers can be a little bit bulky. I think you can just grab these from your local ARB store. I don't care what sort of fire extinguisher it is, just make sure you go and grab yourself a fire extinguisher and chuck it in the car. I actually have two of these, uh, which I've just taken out of the 79 to show you. I keep one in the canopy and I keep one uh, in the car. So at least I've got two on hand, ready to go at all times. Fire extinguisher. Number four, we're gonna get into this one, uh, communication. So if something goes wrong out there, there's so many different ways um, of notifying people. So I'm gonna run through sort of the list of communication things that we're taking here. But straight off the bat, number four, it is a simple one, your mobile phone. Now, um, obviously, first point of call, a lot of Australia now has reception. Um, one big tip that I am gonna give you with your mobile phone is if you're gonna do this remote traveling, you may be traveling around Australia or you may just be going on a long trip, I would highly recommend Telstra. Um, anyone that's looked at any different networks, you get too far out of the cities with uh, some of the other guys, Virgin, Optus, whatever it might be, you have absolutely zero bars. Telstra is the only um, one that I would even consider taking and uh, you'll, you'll do one trip without Telstra and I guarantee you'll go and get Telstra next time. Uh, to take that one step further, in the 79, we've actually installed what they call a cell fight. So basically it's just a signal booster. Uh, it's a little unit that you mount up uh, under your dash, you run an aerial on the bull bar or somewhere on the car. And as long as, as long as you've got at least one bar of reception, whether that's 3G, 4G, 5G, you know, the main one here is we're talking when you're out remote and you maybe just have one bar of 3G, uh, but not quite enough to, take, to make a phone call. All the cell fire does is boost your signal. So if you've got zero reception, it's not gonna help you. But if you've got one bar of reception, it will boost you almost to full, depending on where you are, but it'll give you enough um, boosted signal to make a phone call. So um, look, obviously every man his dog carries a phone with him, but I just thought I'd mention that one, guys. Telstra, and then to take it one step further, you can throw the cell fire in your car. Comes in very handy for most situations. So number five, moving on with communication. Uh, let's say you're out of uh, phone reception and you're in a little bit of strife. Obviously you're not in a full blown emergency yet. I'm kind of gonna work my way up through the communications from uh, mild situations to wild situations. So the next uh, important modification I think every remote traveler should have, and look, most people do in their cars these days, is a good quality UHF. So I'm running the GME XRS unit in, uh, in my car. I've got a couple of different aerials to go with it um, for whether we're in hilly terrain or whether we're in nice flat country. So it does give me two different aerial options. Um, if, if I do get in a little bit of trouble, obviously a UHF will get onto other travelers within the area. A lot of remote roads actually have their own channel as well for trucks on coming in bits and pieces. So it's very important uh, for remote travel to make sure you do have that UHF because if you are out of phone reception, there's a good chance you may be able to get on uh, to someone with your UHF. They can relay and get your help or they may have um, some better forms of communication. All right, along with a good UHF in your car, I like to carry a couple of uh, handheld UHF. So these ones here, they actually come in a, a kit of two. You can get single ones by themselves. These are just the GME TX6160s little five watt handhelds. Now these come in handy for absolutely everything. A couple of situations I can think of um, off the top of my head. Let's say I wanna kick back at camp and Jess just wants to go for a little bush walk or a little hike by herself. She can take the radio. Um, you know, a lot of these locations, we're not gonna have phone reception. So she can just radio back to camp if anything goes wrong, little sprained ankle, anything like that. Even when we head out in the boat, I normally take one of these out in the boat. Obviously it's not your VHF, but it does give me the ability, if we're close enough to land, I can uh, UHF back to land and say, yo, I'm in a bit of trouble. Um, and then let's think of some worst case situations. Let's say uh, the UHF in the car breaks, you've got a backup with you at all times. 
If you come across another traveler who perhaps is stuck or less experienced, um, you know, you may need to recover people that don't have UHFs. You can always um, pass a UHF on to a fellow, fellow traveler. So once you carry these, trust me, they come in handy absolutely everywhere. Um, I always take a little pack of two. A mate normally pinches one, so just keep an eye on that. Um, all right, let's move on. Number six. This one is if you get in a little bit more trouble. It's called Spot. Now, I actually left it in my uh, other vehicle, so I don't have it on me at the moment. So I'll just run you through it and we'll put a couple of pictures up of what it is. But this is basically that, that next step above. It's a GPS tracker uh, that goes in your vehicle and it's got a couple of super uh, handy functions um, that I think makes it worthwhile taking. This one's probably not a necessity, but it definitely comes in um, extremely handy. So, a couple of quick features of the spot. It basically just hangs in your car. Um, one, of the, one of the real cool features of it is you can have a custom message that you write and you can get on the computer before you leave and you can program in uh, all the people that you want to send a text message to. So, um, you know, my sister, for instance, did a, um, a bit of a half lap of Australia Tra uh, traveled solo so you know obviously mum dad were a little bit weary a little bit cautious so she had a message set up every night when she pulled up to camp clicks the uh, message button automatically sends it out to uh, every one of those mobile phone numbers that you list I'm okay um, and you can actually log online and your family can see where you've pulled up um, for the evening something I should have mentioned at the start this, this device doesn't need any uh, cellular uh, reception whatsoever it full runs off GPS. Now, they're only about 250 bucks, cheap insurance. Um, it, it's also like a full GPS tracking device. So your family can log in and see exactly where you are. If you don't check in for a couple of days and they think something might be wrong, they can basically log on and see exactly where you are. Now, if you know you're gonna be attempting uh, something challenging, there's a I'm okay button, which you can basically just hit, you know, maybe they know you're about to do something challenging for the day and you just wanna let them know I'm okay, but it just gives people back home a, a bit of peace of mind. Now, um, then if the worst comes to the worst and basically you get stuck out there somewhere, it does have an SOS button, which will send your GPS location to uh, some of those emergency services and uh, you will get rescued, hopefully. Real basic uh, communication without having cell service. Okay, so number seven, now we're getting a little bit more extreme again, that one step above the spot. Now this is what they call your PLBs. Um, this one's GME, full Australian, um, own Australian made. This is a personal location device, very similar to your EPIRB. Um, difference is the EPIRB is actually registered to a vessel, uh, which we'll, we will have for our uh, little tinny, and I'll run through that at the end. Couple of quick differences. Your spot device is uh, commercially owned, so you actually have to register and pay a fee, and uh, that's what allows you to use their, their, um, their systems and their satellites. This one here, you register online. With the spot, I think it has to go to certain um, satellites and certain people, and then it'll get relayed. This one uh, uses basically the government satellites, as far as I'm aware, and this thing will pinpoint you down to within about a 100 meter radius. So. Couple of cool things to note, seven year sort of warranty, seven year battery life. So this thing, buy one once, these are about 300 bucks. Buy it once, carry this wherever you go. So if we're gonna head out in, um, head out for a hike, we can make sure we take it with us when we're out on Can-Ams or quad bikes, or if you jump on the dirt bike, or even if you're going for a hike. So you're away from the vehicle, it's a nice compact device, but this one here is if you get in serious trouble, not I'm, uh, I'm in a little bit of trouble, I'm bogged, I need a hand. This is, I need to be rescued via helicopter ASAP. Once again, cheap insurance. If you're gonna be out in these remote locations, you get bitten by a snake, you break your leg, you're bleeding out. This is, send help, um, I am screwed. Definitely worth having in your kit. I think you're absolutely crazy not to have that one in your kit. It's probably more important than the spot and your, your, your mobile phones and bits and pieces. So number eight, these ones are a little bit more vehicle specific, um, but these are definitely essentials for those remote touring. So number eight is a good quality recovery kit. You will definitely need one of these. So I've got one here. It's your essential recovery kit. I've been running ARB recovery kits for the last 10 years over time. 
your recovery uh, gear gets worn and torn and every now and again it's a good idea to just inspect it and um, upgrade if need be. So, real quick, what you get in a recovery kit. This one I've put together because I've got a brand new kit in the 79. So this is just some older stuff I've had laying around. Straight off the bat, uh, snatch strap. You need a good snatch strap. Um, to go with the snatch strap, a couple of shackles. That's a soft shackle. Uh, then, or just your standard shackles. But if you get in a little bit of strife um, and there's a fellow traveler coming through, snap strap straight on the other vehicle or if you're traveling with someone else, quick and easy recovery. Okay, so the next one, uh, winch extension strap. The other important thing you're gonna need is a winch. So on the 79, I've got uh, a couple of bush ranger winches. I actually do have one front and rear. That's a little bit excessive, but I definitely recommend for remote um, travel that you do have a winch on your front of your vehicle. Um, look, worst case scenario, if you, don't, if you don't have any of this gear, you can always take a spare tire off, dig a hole, use a winch to get out in most situations. That's if um, you know there's no trees or bits and pieces around to winch off. Um, if you do have trees, they may be a long way away. Winch extension strap comes in extremely handy. To go along with the winch extension strap is your tree trunk protector. Um, then of course, you've got your winch um, pulley block here through your uh, tree trunk protector, double your pulling capacity. Look, most of you guys know what this is. I'm not gonna go into too much detail. And then of course, a good quality um, winch dampener, which I have in the car. But look guys, if nothing else, there's lots of companies out there that do them. ARB, I've trusted and used for years. So a good quality recovery kit is, it's essential. It's, it's just, a, it's the first thing you grab when you get in a bit of strife out there and you get bogged. To go along, I think these days, every good recovery kit should have a set of Max Tracks. Mine are on top of the 79, so here's just one of their smaller uh, little UTV sets, but um, just some sort of solo recovery board. Um, you know, the main reasons for these is when you're out in the sand, there's not really anything to winch off, you, look, you use Max Tracks for just about everything. You've seen our videos over the years. We give them an absolute hiding, whether in mud, sand, snow, whatever it might be. But a good set of recovery boards, Max Tracks, they sort of go hand in hand with a good quality recovery kit these days, I think. They can also be used for a lot of other applications, but we won't go into all of that now. All right, number nine. Now look, oh, this one is heavy. Number nine is basically spares and tools. It's inevitable when you're, out in the, when you're out in the bush or you're out in a remote location that something, no matter how small it may be, will eventually go wrong with your four-wheel drive or van or whatever you're towing. So a good toolkit, I'm not gonna run through uh, what my toolkit is. I do go into detail uh, in our packing video, so make sure you have a look at that if you wanna see exactly what toolkit we take. Um, and then your basic spares specific for your four-wheel drive. So once again, I'll run through the couple of spares I'm taking for the 70, but just the basics, guys. Uh, um, you know, more of a servicing kit, and then if there's anything specific to your vehicle that you know has the ability to fail or it's a bit of a common problem, just those basic spares. I wouldn't recommend trying to take everything. It's almost inevitable that you'll take all the spares and it'll be something that breaks that you, of course, don't have the part for. So. When packing for remote travel, you can take bits and pieces, but don't try and overdo it. All I've got here is one tool bag um, and um, a little socket set. So have a look at the uh, packing video to see us go into depth, but tools and a couple of basic spares for your specific four wheel drive uh, is number nine. Okay, now number 10. Number 10, this one's not gonna apply to everyone. This is um, probably gonna apply to those that when you are traveling, you either tow on a big boat, you're taking a tinny, maybe you're even just taking something as simple as a kayak. Um, it's more water-based. Now, this, this, this is a kit that's sort of specific to me. We are taking a little tinny on top of the caravan. So I've put together basically an offshore safety kit. Um, now, you can jump online and see what a full offshore safety kit is. I'll just give you some of the basics. I always keep another first aid kit in a waterproof pouch. Um, in there as well. This is just a simple bag, grab it, it goes in the tinny, I don't have to worry about it. Uh, now with the offshore stuff, flashlight, I've got my other fire extinguisher in here. Whether you're on a, a canoe or whether you're um, out in a tinny, you never know what might happen. So these are, these are pretty cool actually, just tiny little paddles that extend out, get you out of trouble. 
little baling bucket. You got a V sheet in here. I got a whole heap of flares. Um, and then of course, the main one is your full GPS EPIRB. Now, this is something that you may overlook. A lot of big boats carry EPIRBs, but um, for you guys out there in the little tinnies, um, look, it's not a bad option to carry a full-size EPIRB. Um, we're gonna be doing a couple of runs out to some little islands and doing a couple of overnighters. You never know when you may need it. Of course, we will have the little personal one there. This may be a little bit overkill to have one of these as well, but um, look, you never know. GPS EPIRB, this one's from GME as well. These are some products I didn't even know they did up until recently. So that's just a bit of a bonus, number 10. That's not gonna to apply to all of you guys that are just solo in a full wheel drive, but um, that's just my little quick grab to go with the tinny. It's something that I did overlook for uh, quite a few years, to be honest. A uh, little bit young, a little bit dumb. Uh, we'd take the tinny out with, you know, a couple of life jackets and um, that's about it. <laughs> so we've got a little bit older, we've learned a few lessons along the way, uh, and now we make sure we take a good little safety bag with us so that if anything does happen, we're covered. So to wrap it up, that is basically my top 10. Over the last 12 years of traveling around, uh, full driving, doing remote trips up to Cape York and three months living out of my full drive. These are the things that I've learned. I've made mistakes, big mistakes over the years, small things like not having a fire extinguisher. Um, we've, we've not carried PLBs on a lot of these trips where we definitely should have. Uh, and we've been very lucky that other travelers have had some uh, better emergency devices than us. Basic recovery kits, all those sort of things, water storages. Sometimes when packing for a big trip, you can get overwhelmed and you can forget some of the basics. So we just thought we'd put this little video together to give you a little insight into what we take. Let me know in the comments, guys, is there anything you think I've missed? A lot of you guys that watch our channel, I know are seasoned travelers. So we love the feedback. Let us know, we're forever learning. We're gonna to continue to share our massive mistakes um, as we go along, but we also wanna give you guys a little bit of knowledge now. We've made a few mistakes, I think we're able to do that. So guys, once again, if you enjoyed, make sure you subscribe, turn that bell on. Um, a packing video will be coming very shortly if you wanna see how we fit out the whole full drive and van. And then of course, by the time you watch this, we will be on our big trip, uh, lockdown under season four of the Explore Life. We're so excited. I can't wait to finally have everything in the car and be on the road. I'm sick of uh, getting ready for this trip. I'm ready to go. So that's it, guys. Till next time, make sure you get out and enjoy the Explore Life.